Welcome to SICE. Today we're looking at how the structure works, what SICE is about, and what better to use than a info structure about SICE. This is a cumulative uh, data set that has been created through notes, posts, and portions of a book that has been written currently. Now, on the top level we see the main concepts. First of all, let's mention about concepts. SEO has all been about words and keywords, so there's a very strong focus on words. What SICE is about is concepts. A person can write about a subject and use completely different words, but the concept remains the same. So understanding concepts as a core understanding, we can then create conceptual flow and use various elements of the concept to build a picture in our websites and our writing and obviously uh, if we bring different ingredients to it we have different results. Um, it's interesting you can go to a supermarket and get uh, all sorts of different types of food but how you put that food together is very very different. Um, you can have the same exactly the same ingredients but people are going to translate that into a completely different meal and obviously a professional chef will do a completely different job with exactly the same ingredients. And so the size is exactly like that. It is based on ingredients and how you interpret those ingredients. So let's look at the top level. There's some interesting factors on here. And one of the main ones that we find from the start is hierarchical. The plus sign allows us to see nested concepts underneath. And if there is no plus sign, these top level nodes relate to concepts that are standalone. So Google, for instance, stands alone and is related to size because that's one of the factors that we've discussed in great detail in regard to size. Interestingly, better concepts. Here you start to see how we can use these things together. Um, extensive restructuring. Yeah, because there's thousands and thousands of words that went into this. SICE as an algorithm has structured this into what we see here. It creates a synopsis. We sometimes call this a, an instant ontology. So it creates a synopsis of everything that we've been talking about and or writing about and in a nice easy to understand matrix or mind map that can create meta descriptions. It's used for optimizing. Languages are the basis of science and we use the patterns within language uh, as a major core of the science algorithm. Say, say we look at language. This is really quite interesting how it pieces all of this together. So languages are actually intrinsically connected to algorithms. It also languages are very local be different concepts and different ways of describing things uh, even in English speaking countries this is very much the case and it provides links because the links of language are the core understanding of size. So if we look at um, optimizing so we go into optimizing and we see there's some really interesting aspects here. Optimizing patterns, um, optimization poetry is a very strong aspect of this and so that comes up and a very interesting connection. Just to show you how the stemming works, if you click on optimization, you see the various versions of optimization. And stemming has been suggested by Google as something that is a ranking factor. It's a case of actually using variations of a similar concept. Okay, so with anything with a plus, you can go into there, so potentially, and then you've got potential as a stemming. So all of those things are in there, which are very, very useful. So, so we look at pattern. Um, we've got pattern. In. So those are words that have been connected through the notes and put together by the algorithm. Okay, so positioning. Positioning is a very important one. So positioning posts. So this this shows you how all of these words and these concepts are connected together. How do you position your posts? And this is one of the, the very uh, strong benefits of size. 
precision is a very interesting factor with size obviously because size is a part of that word so it goes through the processing but precision is the factor and it's interesting that that precision does flow through so those are the various aspects there you can go through all of these obviously and pick out certain ones that you want to write about and that gives you ideas as you're going along okay so let's look at concepts because concepts are such an important thing here so concepts are a creative thing and uh, uh, a cache of ideas um, accuracy clustering consistency correlations um, etc. Conversational is a very important thing at the moment because conversational search is becoming a big factor in, in Google. It's convenient for conversions because people tend to be searching more on a conversational sense. And clusterings, clustering, clusters and the stemming underneath. So when you're writing you might use clusters in one place and clustering in the other place. So it means that you give variations of the same concept. Um, and obviously uh, synonyms are very useful in these places too. Consistency. Conceptual consistency is absolutely vital. So we're, we've got conscious of that consistency, uh, constantly conscious of it in our construction um, and, and in our consultancy. So this consolidates the whole thing. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. Content. Content will be very interesting because it brings in context. So the, the the most important thing in your content is context. But continually keeping an eye on context is very important and that's what SIS definitely does. So to go back to the main menu we go back here and let's have a look at a few other ones. One of the most interesting ones with, with SIS is we can output meta descriptions. Now SIS simplifier takes um, concepts and can continually sizes them down until you get titles and you get meta descriptions. So meta descriptions is really interesting. Obviously meta, meta descriptions are very minimalistic. They've got meanings in them like perfectly concentrated meaning um, in the meta description. Meaningful. Again connecting back to semantic um, so we see that there and a, a matrix and we bring in material that causes that so but the, the major factor with meta descriptions is it's minimalistic and it acts as a compass as such for Google to see whether your uh, information connects with the subject at hand but if you built the meta description from the subject at hand it's far more likely to match okay SIS is also about restructuring. So you can take a document that you've previously written and SIS will structure it conceptually. So restructuring is an interesting aspect and it brings resonance. Also it's very useful in research so you structure your research after you've done the uh, research. SIS will put out these infrastructures and then you basically can use them to develop further written material. So if we dig down into the deeper levels here, say written, again stemming, writer, writing, writers. So when you're writing you can use all those variations in your content. Okay, relativity. So that's a very important thing because all of these things are relative to each other and you notice how size clusters things in conceptual clusters. It really um, does link things together that we know that are generally linked together, but it's nice to see them all together. So if we go relativity, relational, related, relatives, and that's the that's the factor that is important in semantic search optimization. Relativity is probably the major factor. And that brings relevance. We've heard these words used together a lot, resonance and relevance and restructuring and reconstituting. All of these things seem to naturally fit together. Research is obviously a major factor. Um, so if we look at research we've got the stemming researching. Well and you can extend that to researched and, and variations. It just gives you the reminder that there are other variations that you can use and of course synonyms. So it reconstitutes. 
it reconstitutes recent material. That's a very interesting connection, and that's that's um, connected to resizing down the track. So, and retention. Retention is a very interesting thing because the memory works perfectly with synopsises. You can retain information and it can be used to memorize. Um, and very good in education for that, um, that you can memorize material. Your mind thinks this way and puts words together this way in conceptual memory. Okay. So restructuring has got all of these things connected to it. And say if you wanted to re reconstruct uh, an article, then you've got plural articles. Okay. So let's go back to the main concepts. So it deconstructs what is there and then reconstructs it. So it identifies idiomatic connections, the density, which is really quite intriguing. So if we look at um, transliterated, which was a very interesting connection because we, we can do these multiple languages um, connected to size, so we can do any European language. We can see that there's threads between all of these language, uh, automatic threads. We can use it for authoring, testing, technical targets, terms, text, things. So we transliterate these into, into connections triples, which is a part of this, the schematic part of um, semantics, um, targets, tags, technical terms, all of these various things, techniques, technologies. So techniques is connected with technical, as we, we know, it's a root, uh, root stem. Targets, so targets and targeting and targeted. So they, these are all underneath. If we look at hierarchical, which is really interesting, you could say the way that we use this is a heuristic in the sense we take an educated guess that language links with itself. And that's how this whole thing started. An educated guess that language actually linked with other forms and parts of language, which is the basis of uh, linguistic science. Okay, so synopsis, which is a very interesting one, because this is very much a synopsis. What it allows us to do, uh, analysis, we can look at our um, infrastructure in comparison with a competitor's infrastructure and see where the conceptual gaps might be. Um, then we can enhance the information uh, through the synopsis. Um, we enrich entities. So the synopsis actually isolates semantic entities or entities as discussed by uh, many others, uh, things rather than strings and increases, uh, increases, enhances and entire information. Um, and of course, um, it's connected, uh, animated in there, which obviously this, this particular um, interface is. So when you click on things, it's animated. And um, anyone, and anyone can use it. Um, so very encouraging and basically um, a major factor in, in the use of size.